This is Lecture 3 of the Fundamentals of Integrated Project Delivery Systems course. It is entitled Traditional Design Build Bid Project Delivery System. This lecture will cover Design Bid Build or the traditional project delivery method. You will also begin work on Project 1, which will allow you to experience the strengths, weaknesses, and limitations of this project delivery system. A project delivery system is one, a method through which the design and construction of a building project is procured and, pro and contracted. It's also a process selected to execute the design and construction of a project for the purpose of assigning responsibilities and risk to the project team. And it's also a comprehensive start to finish plan for organizing, implementing, executing, and completing the design and construction of a building. The selection of a project delivery system sets the terms for how players interact which can have strong design, cost, schedule, and productivity implications, along with other impacts like risk management and client satisfaction. An overview of the design, bid, build, project delivery system. First, this one is also known as the traditional or general contracting project delivery method. This process is linear. One project phase is completed before another phase has begun. In the diagram at the bottom left, you can see that first, the project design team is selected, then there's a programming phase, then a schematic design phase, followed by design development, construction documents, and then the bidding and selecting the prime contractor happens. Afterwards, the construction starts. So none of this is allowed to overlap in the design bid build project delivery system. The architect and the contractor hold separate contracts with the owner, as you can see in the bottom right diagram. The architect is typically selected on a, on a negotiated professional fee, and the contractor is selected most often based on the lowest bid. Design bid build remains the most frequently used uh, delivery method for construction projects. Here is outlined um, the linear process of design bid build is outlined along with the variations of this method. Basically, the process is as follows. The owner hires a designer to prepare the bid package, which includes the design, construction, drawings, and specs. The bid package is then released to interested contractors who prepare and submit their bid for the work per the construction, drawings, and specs. The owner then selects a general contractor, usually uh, the lowest bid. Uh, based on the construction drawings and specs, the general contractor then hires, the selected general contractor then hires the subcontractors to do the work. In design bid build, the architect's relationship is with the owner, whereas the contractor's relationship is with the construction drawings and specs. And the uh, left bottom corner of the slide shows the um, variations of design bid build project delivery method. The architect and co contractor operate independently with no contractual relationship with or obligation to each other. Owner acts as the filter holding most um, I'm sorry, handling most discrepancies and differences of opinion. The advantages um, of design bid build are um, the biggest advantage is that everyone involved in the design and construction process is familiar with the method and knows their roles and responsibilities. It's very black and white, but very little to no shades of gray involved in using this method. The biggest opportunity lies with the owner since the risk is shifted from the owner to the contractor and the owner has more control over the design. The, dis the disadvantages um, are several. So first, because DBB is a sequential linear process, it is typically the slowest project delivery method. 
There's also no engagement or communication between the architect and the contractor during the design stages. Therefore, the benefit of contractor input regarding constructability, fabrication, and production is not available early in the process. In many cases, contractors are asked to value engineer the project after the bid opening and the bid award. This usually entails the contractor looking at the high dollar items associated with the design and finding cheaper ways to achieve the same function. However, architects argue that this frequently means that aesthetics and sometimes quality are sacrificed because of value engineering process. This experience as the onset of the project can be disheartening and sets the project's tone. It is a hit and miss approach that often leaves all parties, the owner, the architect, and the contractor feeling dissatisfied. One of the most common complaints about design bid build is the finger pointing that can go on between designers and contractors. The segregated services, nature of design bid build creates this situation and naturally encourages self-serving agendas. Often in the design bid build world, there is a dysfunctional structure that is caused by the owner's desire to keep the initial planning and design costs down and to secure the lowest construction bids possible, thereby limiting fees to designers and forcing contractors to look for faults in the documents. The owner thinks the contractor is out to rob him, the architect thinks the contractor is out to make him look bad, and the contractor thinks the architect is incompetent. One of the, most, one of the disadvantages associated with the design bid build is that even though the owner has hired a designer to provide the design plans and specifications for the project, the owner ultimately carries the risk for the design when it goes forward to the contractors for bidding and construction. Because the designer works for the owner, the plans and specs are provided to the contractors by the owner. If there are flaws, errors, or items left out of the design that need to be corrected, the owner bears the cost of those corrections, which are then processed through change orders. So some of the risk, no contractor input during the design phase. No construction until design is complete. Emphasis on fixed price and competitive bid can create an adversarial relationship between the owner and contractor. Length set of contracts. So basically the owner has a contract with the architect, the owner has a contract with the contractor, and the contractor has an owner with the subcontractor. This undermines teamwork. Architect distant from construction. Divided design and construction responsibility creates adversarial architect-contractor relationships. Construction loan disbursement may be withheld until start of the construction. High architect and contractor risk. And there are usually a proliferation of change orders. So why choose design bid build project delivery method? One of the main reasons is this is mandated by the owner. Legislation uh, restricts the use of other delivery methods. And if um, owner's primary goal is low cost, then this is the method to select. Uh, which projects are a good candidate? Which types of projects are good candidates for design, bid, build? Uh, projects that are simple. Projects without um, tight schedules associated with them, uh, projects where owner, owner wants uh, the most control over design. What are some of the drivers um, of design bid build delivery system? Uh, uh, such things as construction um, industry firms, professional associations, green building practices, policy, legal profession are some of the drivers. Uh, and the biggest driver is the construction industry firms. Again, because this is, um, it was one of the most widely used design um, project delivery methods and so very familiar. The construction industry is very familiar with the method. Um, the expected changes that are to uh, that are to occur over as time progresses, this method is not going to be selected as often as other methods. Um,
All right, so this slide shows that uh, maximizing the budget is the top driver for owners for selecting the, the um, design bid build project delivery method, and that the top trigger with the greatest influence in selecting design bid build delivery system for architects and contractors is owner mandate uh, contracts. Obstacles to using design, bid, build, delivery systems. So first, um, owners said that too few checks and balances are available during in this system. There's typically additional cost due to the length of the contract because it is a linear process. Sometimes there are higher cost contracts. And then some of the lower things that were mentioned were lack of familiarity with the delivery system and lack of fair standardized contract documents. Top obstacles preventing wider use of design bid build delivery systems for architects. The highest is the cost contracts, so the, co the contracts are much higher. And then secondarily, it is lack of owner interest in delivery system. The top obstacles preventing wider use of design bid build delivery systems for contractors First, is owner unfamiliar with the delivery method? And then secondarily, lack of owner interest in delivery system and too few checks and balances. These are some diagrams showing uh, impacts of design bid build on project cost performance. So according to owners, 67% that their projects were completed on budget, 27% were under budget. Typical cost savings reported by architects and contractors differ a, a little bit where, at, where, the, um, where the own budget goes down to just 20%. Um, percentage of projects completed according to owners, so 67% thought these projects completed on time. And then typical schedule savings reported by architects and contractors differs, differs as well. These are actually really useful to look at in relationship to the other delivery systems that we'll talk about later on in the semester. Impacts of design, bid, build, delivery systems. So these, you can see in the red, these are what architects said and in the blue is what contractors said. Um, improved effectiveness of sharing project information ranked the highest, but as you can see, this is only 38% or 45% of all architects and contractors polled. There is also, it also shows that there's the reducing need for value engineering and reducing the risk of litigation as well. The risks associated with design bid build include um, cost overrun on a project, um, delay of project schedule, and adversarial relationship and culture between, um, among all parties involved. The best way to mitigate these risks is to select a project delivery method that best fits the particulars of a project.